Welcome back. In the last video, we connected a receiver to the Betaflight F3 flight controller. I took you into Betaflight, showed you how to set everything up to get it working, as well as get telemetry working. Now let's talk about how to add in a camera, video transmitter, and power the both of them and be able to use it with a built-in OSD. The pins you need to be familiar with are going to be these four pins right here. On the very edge, we've got ground. The second pin is RAM, and we'll talk more about this in a second then video out and video in. So let's do the easy part first. Video in is going to be the video wire coming from your camera. Video out will be the video wire going to the video transmitter. So here is my camera video wire and here is my video transmitter video wire. And you don't have to solder these onto the bottom side of the board. I'm just doing this uh, so you guys can see what pins I'm using. You can do it from this way. So now let's talk about this RAM pin. Uh, this pin right now is doing nothing. There's no voltage coming out of it, nothing. If you look at these pads over here, you will see five volts and then RAM in the middle and then VBAT on the right side. You can choose to have five volts coming out of this RAM pin or the full voltage of the battery. There is no 12 volt regulator on this board. The 12 volts is not involved at all. So if you do need 12 volts, you will have to use a PDB uh, with a regulator or add in a separate regulator. Um, I don't see that being the case for most people. I mean, adding in a PDB to this flight controller, which is a PDB, it really wouldn't make sense. Most cameras require at least 5 volts, and they can go up to a certain amount of voltage, or some are just 5 volts alone. And in that case, you would have to power it with 5 volts. For the video transmitters, most of them can be powered with a pretty high voltage. It's really going to depend on what cell battery you are using. For example, I use four cell batteries and my video transmitters are rated for, I don't know, 21 volts, something like that. So I could power my video transmitter directly off the, the VBAT or battery. So I do plan on powering my VTX with a full voltage and for that reason I bridged uh, the VBAT pin to the RAM pin with a drop of solder. Do not solder all three of these pads together because once you plug in battery it's going to fry the board. So this is going to be the power wire to my video transmitter and I also have the ground. Now what's remaining is going to be the power and ground wire from my camera. I need to power it with 5 volts. We could have selected 5 volts on this RAM pin but the reason I didn't do that is because all of these pins in the middle are all 5 volt pins and it's going to be the same exact thing. So we've got the video transmitter powered up here and then I can power my camera with any 5 volt pin of my choosing. Or the other thing and what I'm actually going to do, my video transmitters actually have the uh, 5 volt regulator built in. So when I plug in this harness it will be getting the full voltage of the battery off this RAM pin going into the video transmitter and then this is going to step it down to 5 volts and kick it back out through a separate power wire that I have right here as well as a ground. So for my camera with the remaining power and ground wire I will just connect it to my video transmitter and the video transmitter is actually going to power my camera. So that's just another way of doing it. Uh, but if your VTX doesn't have that feature you can just power the camera off of any of these 5 volt pins and then place a ground on any of these ground pins on the edge. So just to show you for this example, I will power the camera off the flight controller just to show you that it does work. Okay, I've got my camera wired up. I just use the uh, the row for the PPM pin because I'm using an S-Bus receiver. I'll never use that pin, so that leaves me uh, the 5 volt pin available. Now I'll take a USB cable, plug it into your flight controller, and let's go ahead and go into Betaflight. The first thing you want to do is go to configuration, scroll down, and make sure that you have OSD turned on. If you did have to turn it on, then make sure you save and reboot. Also, if you do want your name or call sign showing up on your OSD, then go ahead and type it in here, and then once again save and reboot. Now if we go to the OSD tab, you want to first turn off logo, just to get it off the screen, makes it easier. I don't even, it doesn't show up in the real OSD, I don't know why it's there. Next for video format, you can leave this at auto and it should automatically detect what format your camera uses, but if not, then you may have to manually select PAL or NTSC. But try auto first, 
Uh, though I will say, if you already know that your camera uses NTSC, then I would select that because you'll notice that the size of the screen changes. So, uh, f just for example, the next step is to go ahead and pick and choose what you want showing up on your OSD. Okay, I've got mine selected. After that, just click them and drag them to exactly where you want them. And I like mine like this. So, back to what I was saying, if you have this set to auto, it's going to give you a screen this size, but if your camera uses NTSC, the size of the screen changes, and what you drag to the bottom is no longer going to show up on your on-screen display. So now I'm going to save. Now we can disconnect, unplug the USB. Now when we plug in a battery, We see that I now have my OSD up and running, and it's working great. Okay, fast forwarding a little bit, I actually have this flight controller and a multi-rotor. What I wanted to show you is, if you do yaw to the left and pitch up, then that will enter the menu. And then once you're in the menu, uh, you can just use your sticks to change your PIDs, rates, and everything else. And that's going to wrap up this video, guys, so I hope you enjoyed it. Look in the description below for more information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.